So everybody, I, uh, right now, Zoom doesn't let us unmute you, so you have to unmute yourselves, but we would love to hear from everybody. A big good morning. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Hi, Kate. Good morning. And, Hi, Margaret. <laughs> and especially to families that are celebrating uh, graduation or move ups. We have our move up girls here in the crowd. <laughs> and, uh, you know, just the accomplishment of completing a school year with all the challenges that that has meant. And I know that we have educators out there too. So for the educators who have helped bring our children to this point in time, again, gratitude for all of the support that has gone into that. So just that moment of acknowledgement, we will certainly include our graduates in our prayers as well. And this morning, let's just begin by going through any announcements that we may have for the life of the church. And of course, part of that is that indeed we had graduation ceremonies yesterday for Kennett High School. I believe Freiburg is also celebrating graduations and we know that there are college graduates that have been celebrating all along. So just a shout out to all that has been accomplished. I also want to talk, quickly say there's a Black Lives Matter march today at one o'clock in North Conway. And I know people are interested in knowing about these events. So just to note that that's happening. We are continuing our cocktails and conversation series and we are beginning to work on holy humor. So look forward to joining us on Fridays at five o'clock via Zoom with your beverage of choice to explore what laughter looks like in the Bible, in the Hebrew scripture and in the gospels. We are beginning our Courageous Conversation series on Wednesday at the library, well, in, in conjunction with the library, but over Zoom, mornings and evenings, and afternoons. So if you have not yet, please email the church if you are interested in participating in those. The broader the conversation, the more deeply we can actually go. So I just want to affirm that your participation would be welcome and, and meaningful. <clears throat> and finally, that tomorrow we're going to continue our young people's music program with a band slash choir experience. So Billy will be sending out an email to all of the participants today just to remind you of whatever homework he assigned you a couple weeks ago. And that's it for me for announcements, except to acknowledge our contributors this morning. Uh, Jeanette is helping co-host this gathering. Chris is in the back, Wizard of Oz, doing production. Alan has once again provided us with one of his compositions, which we'll hear at the end of the service. And we'll be hearing many of his compositions throughout the service. And Billy has been meeting with our choir all along. I'm going to now invite you to, I'm gonna to try to mute everybody so that we can go into a time of centering ourselves with a song by Mary Eads. I feel like going on, I feel like going on, oh trials mount on every hand, I feel like going on, I feel like going on, I feel like going on, I feel like going on. I feel like going on. on. I feel like going 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 on.
Life is exciting and here we are. We are going to consider ourselves maybe flustered and centered all at the same time. But let us regather ourselves and take a deep breath and enter into the prayers of those that we are holding up this weekend. I was asked to raise up Atlanta in our prayers. There has been a resurgence in demonstrations and protests, including some violence there due to the shooting of another person named Richard. Um, again, these are complicated situations and whole communities are, are in pain and speaking out because of them. So let us just hold that community, which is right now in the midst of the early hours of grief and anger as they attempt to create some kind of peace and meaningful engagement. We think again and hold in prayer our graduates. We hold in prayer the families of Barry and Seal and Dick. We ask for comfort for Jean. We think of those who have died because of COVID. Let us never overlook the great cost that this pandemic has brought into our own lives in this nation. Well over 100,000 now have died and worldwide the pain continues. And our country in many parts is, is actually being hit with already a second round of occurrences. So as we reopen, we also pray for caution and stability and that we will be judicious in how we reconnect so that people continue to preserve life as much as possible. We give thanks for all those that have indeed been on the front lines of the pandemic. We give thanks for those that are our first responders, our police, our firemen, our EMTs, our military, all over the world. May they be asked to perform honorably and may they seek the best in themselves and in each other as they serve to protect and off create peace in our communities. We pray for our leaders, for the profound responsibilities that face them in these times. We pray for the communities that we continue to partner with Zimbabwe and Honduras. We pray for people that are living with new diagnoses of illnesses like cancer. There are those among us who are just beginning treatment or have simply just received the naming of a condition. We have friends and neighbors, brothers and sisters who are deep into their journey through different kinds of illnesses. And we have some who are in recovery we think of those that have lived with strokes and are recovering from the strokes, including Richard and Paulette. And many are living in isolation and that isolation is just beginning to open up. And so for those that may get a chance to reconnect and for those of us that are trying to create connection for those that face of love and may each of us embody the church in these times for those that are bereaved may we hold each other in prayer i invite you to join me now in the prayer that we were all taught saying together the lord's prayer Give us this day our daily bread, and 
and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And I'm just going to check again. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Um, we're going to have to work on our, our internet signal, but I'm not sure we have control over it. It goes down sometimes at the church. Please uh, simply be in a, in a posture of listening now as we hear the scripture from Genesis, which was chosen as an introduction to holy humor. You should hear, hear the voice of reading, but the words will also be on the screen. When Abram was 99 years old, the Lord appeared to Abram and said to him, I am God Almighty. Walk before me and be blameless, and I will make my covenant between me and you, and will make you exceedingly numerous. Then Abram fell on his face, and God said to him, As for me, this is my covenant with you. You shall be the ancestor of a multitude of nations. No longer shall your name be Abram, but your name shall be Abraham, for I have made you the ancestor of a multitude of nations." I will make you exceedingly fruitful, and I will make nations of you, and kings shall come from you. I will establish my covenant between me and you, and your offspring after you throughout their generations, for an everlasting covenant, to be God to you and to your offspring after you. And I will give to you and to your offspring after you the land where you are now an alien, all the land of Canaan, for a perpetual holding and I will be their God. God said to Abraham, As for you, you shall keep my covenant, you and your offspring, after you, throughout their generations. God said to Abraham, As for Sarai, your wife, you shall not call her Sarai, but Sarah shall be her name. I will bless her, and moreover, I will give you a son by her. I will bless her, and she shall give rise to nations. Kings of peoples shall come from her. Then Abraham fell on his face and laughed and said to himself, Can a child be born to a man who is a hundred years old? Can Sarah, who is ninety years old, bear a child? And God said, But my covenant I will establish with Isaac, whom Sarah shall bear to you at this season next year. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, My Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought, and wash your feet, and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread, that you may refresh yourselves, and after that you may pass on, since you have come to your servant. So they said, Do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, Make ready quickly three measures of choice flour, knead it, and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a, ha a calf, tender and good, and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them. And he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, Where is your wife Sarah? And he said, There, in the tent. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself, saying, After I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh and say, Shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time I will return to you in due season, and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied, saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, Oh yes, 
you did laugh. The Lord dealt with Sarah as he had said, and the Lord did for Sarah as he had promised. Sarah conceived and bore Abraham a son in his old age, at the time of which God had spoken to him. Abraham gave the name Isaac to his son, whom Sarah bore him. And Abraham circumcised his son Isaac when he was eight days old, as God had commanded him. Abraham was a hundred years old when his son Isaac was born to him. Now Sarah said, God has brought laughter for me. Everyone who hears will laugh with me. And she said, who would ever have said to Abraham that Sarah would nurse children, yet I have borne him a son in his old age. So ends the reading. Just checking my connection. Can you all hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Please pray with yes, me. Sir. Yeah. Thank you, Kevin. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So holy humor and humor in these times, it feels almost one like an essential part of our coping. And at the same time, it feels out of sync with even the news out of Atlanta. And yet, we are in the midst of celebration. And I have noticed that on our prayer fence that we set up at the church, there is an ongoing civil discourse where people write a comment and then others write a reply. And for the most part, it has been civil until the last day or two when people started to cross out each other's words and then started to say things like, go home. So even on our fence, people are are not necessarily honoring each other. And at the same time, that fence was first put up for prayers to think about those that had died of the pandemic, and then for us to continue the prayers for all the things that are going on in our times. And yet somehow we lost sight of the fact that we had graduates and there has not been a single prayer put up for our graduates on the fence yet. So we hung a giant banner yesterday with blessings for our graduates to make sure that they know that we are well aware and celebrating our children, all those that have finished their school year, finished their high school or their college career, those that are moving into a new school or a new grade, and simply keeping them at the forefront of all that we decide to do and how we act and speak on behalf of each other. May our conversations and our actions be ones that we would want our children to model, to learn from, and to inherit as their legacy. And so where does humor fit in all of this? Humor is one of the earliest forms of, of human communication. And if it is true that we are shaped in the image of God, in God's likeness, then the gift of laughter comes from God's self and has been given to us as one of our earliest and most profound ways of connecting with each other, of overcoming fear and anger and sorrow. Because when you are laughing, you literally cannot have those other emotions. It suppresses those emotions most of the time. Now, it's true that there are times that we, we laugh in a different way. We laugh out of nervousness or fear or embarrassment. But most of the time, fear, uh, laughter becomes the, the response that suppresses negative or destructive emotions and gives us a chance to look with different clarity and perspective on what's going on. And... It's also true that we are 30 times more likely to laugh when we are in connection with others than when we are alone. And that most of our laughter rises up out of natural conversation and engagement, as opposed to being prompted by things like jokes or comics or other uh, outside stimulants. The, 
the stimulus comes from the people with whom we are in relationship and with whom we are having a natural flow of dialogue and experience. So it is this gift of laughter coming from relationship that is one of the treasures that God has given us. Um, as, as a note of laughter, I'm going to point out that usually I pull my bangs way down my nose and today I was brave and I trimmed off about an inch of bangs. So that's my laugh for you all today that I actually cut my own hair. So we'll see what happens. But we turn to the story of Genesis and we chose this story because it is the first um, kind of like conversation about people laughing with God. We know that the laughter of God as recorded in the Bible, usually when God's laughter is recorded, God's laughter is the laughter of one who is requiring justice for people that are disobedient or oppressive of others and that God is laughing with the intention to, to remind all people of how to live in right relationship with what is sacred and what is holy. And yet our scriptures would tell us over and over again that God delights in us and finds and rejoices over us when we are connected to God's self in healthy and holistic ways. So God indeed, God's self can experience delight and it's even said in the book of Job that God puts laughter in our mouths and on our lips. So in Genesis, we get this very improbable story of the patriarch and matriarch of, our, of the Hebrew faith and the Christian faith. Abraham is 100 years old and his wife is 90 years old. And what you might need to understand is that in the Jewish tradition, the inheritance or the legacy of um, passing down all that is yours to your children must go through the mother. That children born not to a Jewish mother are not considered Jewish unless the mother then converts and the child can then be accepted. And so it was very important to Abraham that Sarah should conceive and bear him an heir who would carry on his name and receive his legacy and become indeed the first child of the Jewish tradition. And yet here she is 90 years old and suddenly they're hosting angels and God is telling them that she's going to bear Abraham a son. And Abraham's reaction of course is that he falls down on his face laughing so we can, it sounds like a pratfall, like it sounds like something that you'd see on Saturday Night Live, Abraham falls down on his face in front of God. But really, this is an indication of respect. He, he falls earlier on his face and bows himself before God's presence because he honors God. And yet, Re Sarah is, is, listening in she's eavesdropping when the angels are telling abraham that news and so her experience is different and she laughs to herself and she what there's no way and i'm not sure how many women here would actually be really happy to find out that they were going to have a child let's say over the age of 65 or 70. i'm not sure any of us really want to imagine what that would be like but Many, not all of us, many of us have had the privilege of having or raising children, and Sarah has not, and this is her greatest desire, and God is offering it to her, and she can hardly believe it. So her reaction is a little bit, really? And then God catches her, and God even says, why, why is Sarah reacting like that? And she said, and she denies that she laughed. I, I didn't laugh. What? And God says, oh, indeed you did. She isn't punished for that, but she barters with God. And she's actually in this intimate relationship with God where she even tries to pull something over on God and God won't let her. But indeed, there's a time of fulfillment and she does receive that gift of the blessing of God and the bearing of Abraham's son. 
And I simply want to remind us as we look at the images that are coming that this gift of laughter is crucial in these times. That right in the middle of all the stress and the tension that we are under, the gift of relaxing into laughter and into trust with each other is one of the ways that we stay strong and that we continue to have perspective. Let us enjoy a few images of Sarah and Abraham. You'll see on the screen in front of you early images on the right an icon, on the left a small and a miniature painting in a Bible. These show the angels dining with Abraham and Sarah. And may I just say that as we look at the next image, what we are looking at is the earliest story of hospitality for a stranger in the Bible and the Jewish and the Christian tra tradition of offering hospitality to strangers comes from this time, from Abraham's choice to offer his sanctuary to those that come visiting with him. Here we see a Flemish tapestry also showing the angels visiting with Abraham and Sarah. And in the next image, you'll see a painting by Victors who comes out of Rembrandt's studio and you can see the beautiful light glowing in the dark and the light together and the simple everyday details of the table that, at which they're sitting. And yet you see the miraculous, which is the angel's wings some of the artists show us the angels as we might imagine them with wings. And yet in the next image, you'll see that the angels are shown in this, this later watercolor by Ivanov as simple human figures taking their leisure at the table that Abraham and Sarah have created for them. And we know that they're holy because of the whiteness of their garb as opposed to the bright and intense color of Abraham's robes and Sarah's sash and garb. Let us, looking at the next image, see that here again, we have the angels dining with Sarah and Abraham. We remember that this is when they bring the news, the astonishing news that she will bear a child. This is an image by Marc Chagall and in the next image, we see what he thinks of just Sarah and Abraham, Sarah in the foreground and Abraham in the back. And in the next image, we see actually a moment that is not recorded. Well, it's recorded, but I didn't read it for you this morning, but that between the time that Sarah remember receives the news that she will bear a son for Abraham and the coming true of that promise, she doubts. And she doubts enough that she actually arranges for a handmaiden, Hagar, to become a subordinate wife of Abraham to assure that his lineage will continue. And so the next few images are images that show Sarah introducing Hagar to Abraham, promising that if she cannot bear a child, then Hagar will bear that child. And again, we see the difference between the age of Sarah and the young woman that she's sharing in Abraham's life. And Hagar becomes the mother of Abraham's first child, Ishmael. Ishmael, it is traditionally believed, becomes the patriarch of the Muslim people. He is the forefather of those that came before Muhammad. And in the next image, we return to the story of Sarah and Abraham because despite their doubt and the arrangements they made on their own to take care of Abraham's lineage, Sarah, Sarah also bore him a child. And here she does look just overjoyed. And Abraham looks astonished. And there's little Isaac in their arms. And we have one final image by Chagall. In the next image, we see how they're shown a few days after the birth as Abraham prepares to perform a circumcision, which becomes the mark of the covenant between God and Abraham and Abraham's descendants. 
and now we return to each other and we remember that in this story the name of their son is Isaac and Isaac means he laughs the very end of the scripture tells us that God indeed brought laughter right into the heart of their lives and that when they thought things were impossible they were indeed possible and that laughter is what they received as the great mark of their covenant and the beginning of the generations that would carry down this story and indeed become the ancestors of King David and ultimately of Christ. And thus, Isaac's story is our story and the laughter that was poured into Sarah and Abraham's lives is the laughter that has flowed down into our lives too. And so I ask us again, in the midst of all these times, can we find the balance to receive the laughter that is promised to us and to share it with each other so that we are not only weeping, but that we are people of joy and that we know that there is more than the sorrow and the darkness that may press upon us at times, that there is light and that we are wired to rise up and give each other happiness and safety and stability and peace and laughter. Laughter gives us so many gifts. It improves our immune system. It improves our cardiac function. It floods our brains with endorphins so that we are lifted up emotionally and, and physiologically. It suppresses pain. It helps us connect with each other. And if you're really worried about your body image, it will burn, burn 40 calories if you laugh for at least 10 or 15 minutes. How can you turn down laughter? May laughter live in us as it has been promised. May delight be ours to give and to receive. And in the conversations that we put on the fence or that we carry out in person and the actions that we choose to take, may we seek the gift of peace and peace giving and laughter and joy. May we not give pain, but may we work towards a peace in which joy and laughter find their home. Thanks be to God. This is the time in the service when we invite you to remember that among the great promises that we offer to each other is the promise to continue to support the work of the church. Many of you have done so with your time and your efforts and your talents. We hear your gifts in this service itself. We ask too that you will choose to make a financial contribution if you're able to you can do so at jxncc.org you can make your regular weekly contribution and drop it off at the church or mail it in these are times when we are becoming safety for people as the country reopens and things that had been suspended like rental payments. People are in more crisis perhaps now than they were even two months ago. The safety net is changing and we are the vibrant hope. We are the people that have provided food in Zimbabwe and Honduras and we are the people that are actively working in our own community to be the light of peace and transparency and connection right in our own village and right in our own valley. And we ask that you will help us in this work. Now may we offer each other the gift of song. Let us join together in the song, Simple Gifts.
family this morning. We will share together our beloved benediction. And then if you wish to stay after and say hello, we'll be listening to part of Alan's composition and then we'll soften that so that you can chat with each other in our virtual coffee hour. Just a little teaser for next week. Chris Bailey will be our guest speaker for Father's Day celebration. He's the father of Camden Bailey and he's an educator here in the Valley. So it will be very cool to hear what he has to share with us. And we look forward to gathering again next week, but we ask that you will all be safe, that you will hold this world in prayer and that you will carry a prayer of peace on your lips and in your heart. Go in peace.